Many are asking how the coronavirus is affecting hotshot trucking. And truthfully, there's several different answers. On a national level, uh, the federal government has suspended the hours of service mandate, which says that a truck driver, including hotshot drivers, can only drive for work 11 hours a day. And in the first eight hours of those 11 hours, you have to stop for a 30 minute break. Well, for the truck drivers that are uh, transporting materials and food and you know, a lot of the things that are keeping the economy going and keeping the medical uh, sector going, they have suspended the 11 hour uh, driving limit and also suspended the 30 minute uh, mandate uh, for a break within those first eight hours. So basically they're letting guys and ladies that are driving trucks, supplying grocery stores and, and, and hospitals and such, they're letting them drive without these mandates just to be able to take off the limitations and get things to where they need to go. The question is, are truck drivers essential or non-essential? And this includes hotshot truckers as well. The answer is we're all essential because whether you're delivering medical supplies to hospitals, groceries to grocery stores, toilet paper to, you know, random other stores, or whether you're uh, transporting raw materials to and from companies so they can continue to stay open and keep the economy moving forward, all those are things delivered by truck drivers and hotshot truckers. Therefore, we're all considered essential. Shout out to Tafts, my factoring company, for informing me about this. Support feels great, no matter how small or how big. And this is a really small gesture on behalf of one of the brokers that I move a lot of freight for. But I'm really happy to have gotten a free Starbucks coffee to keep me fueled up when I'm on the road. That's Corona on a national and industry level. But let's jump into this week's weekly money. All right. So, I'm. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really snowing, by the way. It's the end of March and it's really snowing. I just got to my drop for this load, which is pretty darn heavy. I should use better judgment and put this over the axles because it is pretty darn heavy but nonetheless the main thing is that you saw my flashes are on but now i have my lights on full time and if you notice my lights are off they're supposed to stay on along with the truck so this has happened before i probably just have a short um good thing is that i'll be able to continue my day it's daytime you should have running lights on in the daytime, um, but a lot of guys don't have them on in the daytime. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and run without my running lights in the daytime, but thank God my blinkers all work. I tested that on either side of my trailer and on the back of my trailer, my hazards work and my uh, blinkers work. So that's important because people need to know that, you know, this big truck and trailer is getting over from one lane to the other or making turns in towns and stuff. So, um, but anyway, I have some, not electrical work to do, it's not even a fuse. Uh, some of the connectors in the lights or that connect the wires to the actual lights that you see around the trailer, um, the metal sometimes touches the frame of the trailer and shorts it out. I know that because I paid 150 bucks before to have a repair done and they were like, no, this is what's really going on. So it was worth the money, but at least now I know what to do. Uh, but it's gonna have to wait till I get back home, which means I got until about six, seven o'clock tonight to get back home because I don't want to run and can't run in the dark without running lights. So yeah, adventures in trucking. This is my second stop of the day. I'm picking up, I think I'm picking up that monster and it has to be tarped. Thanks guys. Thank you, man. Anytime. Thanks. I'm six foot three. So this is no shabby load. It's nine feet, two inches tall. And if it wasn't for those guys, I'd be up the creek trying to get the tarp on top of this and over it. All right, it's time for the big guns. So these are my bungees for securing my tarp once I'm done. These are the bungees I use to tie up my tarp when it's rolled up. Obviously I took them off because I unrolled it. Uh, my chains, my 70 grade chains, and two binders. So I can't strap this because it's really delicate up top, um, which is fine with me. I don't want to damage it. Did that once, although it wasn't my fault. It wasn't labeled properly, so I escaped that once. So let me get to tarping and then to chaining and then to moving.
I found no loads to move on Tuesday or Wednesday, and this is the first time in a year that I haven't found loads two consecutive days. But when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. So with the downtime, I decided to create a course to help you guys get on the road. You all have been asking really good questions such as, how do I get loads? What's the process like for being paid? Do I need a CDL to get into hotshot trucking? So I decided to start this course and I'm almost done with it. I should unveil it next week during the weekly money segment. And it's free, just another way I can keep you guys moving. It's almost eight in the morning on Friday and I budgeted 45 minutes for the usual traffic getting into the Boston area. But this is, this is what traffic looks like now. I'm gonna call this the Corona effect. There's no upside to the coronavirus, but the absence of traffic, I'm not really gonna complain about that. Anyway, arriving at my drop and time to keep it moving. A bright and sparkly Friday morning to you. Uh, supposed to be at my first drop at 8.30. It's 8.24, I'm stoked. Bit of a maze to get down to the drop spot. Multiple buildings on this location, but hey, good directions and uh, let's get this thing off. I got 17 minutes to drive to my next um, uh, stop, which is a pickup. And that's going about an hour and 10 minutes. Should be done with all that by noonish. Maybe have some time to edit some videos or uh, find another load to occupy my afternoon. It's Friday. We'll see what happens from there. Corona strikes again. I used to walk in here, say hi to the loaders, beeline to the bathroom, and be out by the time they had me loaded. Just tarp it and get ready to go. Now I'm calling a phone number and knocking on the door like a regular stranger, and I can't even use the bathroom anymore. I think for the first time I'm noticing the effects of this virus on the hotshot trucking industry, at least in the Northeast. Lately, I've been picking up and dropping off and asking the guys there, are you noticing a slowdown? And they're telling me, yeah, pretty much across the board. You see less guys inside of the factories, less guys on forklifts. Um, I think it's just a sign of the times. I'm sure we'll bounce back at some point and I'm going to keep grinding to make this money. Uh, I may even have to expand my boundaries and go further than New England. But, you know, it is what it is. I mean, seriously. This is a thing of beauty right here. My tarp's 28 feet, so literally, I got to the end. Like, I'm right there. Everything comes at the front of a load. Nothing ever comes at the back of a load. All the wind is going this way. So, look at that though. That's a thing of beauty. I lined up my ratchets to where there's safety pieces put in place for strapping. I typically do two in the first 20 feet, two in the last 20 feet. I couldn't because those pieces, those safety pieces aren't anywhere else. So I did as much as I could, but that is gorgeous. Strap over it to keep the tarp further pressed down and not flapping in the wind. Can't beat that. Top three. You're good. Uh, Stop right there. All right, so my day has ended and my week has ended, not because I don't have any energy to keep going or because I don't have fuel, but because of what time it is. Let me explain. Uh, it's 2.22 right now, and I've been in this parking lot for about, oh, I don't know, an hour and a half. I had to correct some errors uh, on some uh, bill of ladings, BOLs, that I had to submit to some brokers uh, if I wanted to get paid on loads that I've pulled in the past, so I had to do that. Got to keep it all on the up and up and peaceful with the um, with the factoring companies and the brokers and also I had to tend to that. And also it's it's, uh, you know, a little bit after two. Most shippers stop loading at three. Uh, of course, I have my load board on. I've been checking it and I haven't seen anything come come, you know, over the uh, across the load board um, that's picking up where I am. I'm in Massachusetts, kind of near Boston. Haven't seen anything around here to pick up going anywhere. Um, so essentially I'm going to grab lunch. I'm going to head home. And the other thing is that I made an appointment to have my, uh, my wiring looked at for my trailer, my, all my trail lights, my side blinkers and my brake lights are working as hazard lights and, and signal lights, but not as running lights, which means that when it's dark, I am, I have a black trailer on the road and that is not a good look. You get pulled over in a hot second for that. This morning I left later than I wanted to. I had to wait till the sun came up somewhat. So I wasn't a hazard to other drivers, but I gotta get this taken care of because I typically am up at three on the road by four. Uh, and sometimes I get home late and again, I'm out, at, out late at night. Can't have 
no running lights. So I made an appointment for this coming Tuesday, drop it off at 8.30, they're gonna look at it, hopefully it's as quick as it was last time, it was less than two hours, um, but I'm gonna drop it off to them, and since I'm not gonna have my trailer, it means I can't work, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my Twic card, super excited about that, I've been wanting to get it for a year now, and I just never have the day where I wanna let go of money to go get it. And you have to you know, book an appointment ahead of time. So like, if there's no loads today, I can't be like, oh, I'll just drop in. You don't drop in, you make an appointment to get your Twit card. Um, your Twit card allows you to get into, in and out of ports. Um, you do a lot of that with cars. A lot of cars go to port and they ship out of the country or you pick up at a port and they come into the country. Um, some freight loads, rarely, you'll pick them up at a port, like especially New Jersey, New York area, there's a lot of ports down there. Uh, you'll pick up loads or drop off loads to a port and you need a TWIC card, T-W-I-C card, which is basically the government has screened you and, you know, blessed you to go on to the ports and not cause any mischief. So uh, it's important. I've lost maybe 10 loads in my career thus far, my young career um, for not having a TWIC card. So enough of that. I, I don't like to have strikes against me if, if I can control them. Um, so Tuesday, my trailer's going in for some electrical review and work and repair. And while that's there, I'm going to, you know, be efficient and take advantage of the time and go get my Twit card, or at least go do my in-person application, which is the way you do it. You apply online, then you have an in-person appointment, you bring some ID cards, and I don't know what else goes on after that because I haven't done it, but I'll be doing it on Tuesday. So, uh, yeah, life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Later.